Hi, and welcome to another edition of Hacking Maths. Today, we're going to be looking, calculating the perimeter and area of six-sided shapes that are made up of right angles. So, let's just jump right in. So here in front of us, we have our six-sided shape. But before we begin, we need to know some definitions. So, perimeter. What is the perimeter? The perimeter is the distance all the way around the shape. So we would start at, say, this point here. We would go down this side. We go along this side, we go along here, we go along here, we go along here, we go along here, and we add up those one, two, three, four, five, six lengths. And once we add them together, that gives us the distance around the shape, which is the perimeter. Area? Well, we're not going to be calculating the area of a six sided shape. We're going to make this into a little bit simpler. We're going to calculate the area of a four sided shape with right angles. So that means we're calculating the area of a rectangle. And the formula for the area of a rectangle is length times width. And we will, first of all, have to create some rectangles out of this to make it that little bit easier for us. But don't worry, I'll show you how to do that. So first of all, to calculate the perimeter, we need to know every length on this shape. And if we look at it, we can see that this length here is missing. We don't have that length. And on the left-hand side here, we don't have that length here either. So we need to find this. Luckily, this diagram has all the information that we need to work out those missing lengths. So let's start with this top one here. We'll work this one out here, this one, and I'm going to call it a red length here like this one. Okay, so this is a width. So how am I going to work out this width? Well, let's think about our shape. If I started here on this side and worked all the way across to this side over here, I know the total distance is 20 centimeters. Now, all I have to do is find something that's horizontal in here, and I can use this to work out the total distance across. So here we have, let's say we start here, we go across here and we have completed nine, but have we made it all the way across the shape yet? No. If we continue across here, all the way, we will get to the other side. And that total distance from here, from A to B, is going to be 20 centimeters. So we've already traveled nine centimeters. How much further do we have to travel to get to B? Okay, nine plus what is 20, or 20 minus nine is 11. So our distance is 11 centimeters. Okay, so we've worked out that length there. Okay, so that was, we started at this point here. We went across and said, we've traveled nine. How much further do I have to travel to get all the way across from here? And that tells us this distance along here is going to be 11. Okay, let's do the same for this distance on the right-hand side. So we'll call this the blue one over here. So if we started at the bottom here, Let's call that A, and we went to the top here, B, we would have traveled a total distance of 15 centimeters. So let's start at the bottom, and we travel up to here. Oh, I don't know how far I've traveled. Maybe I shouldn't be starting at the bottom. Maybe I should start at the top. So let's start at the top, let's start up here. And we travel down, I'm like, okay, I know, I've traveled four centimeters. How much further am I going to have to travel so I can get down to the bottom down here? Well, we've traveled four. We know the total distance is 15. So it would be 15 take away four, which is, that's right, it's 11. So this blue side here is 11 centimeters. Now, I just want to point out that these two 11s, it's not always going to be the same. They're going to be different. It's just by chance that they are the same in this example. So just be careful with that. Now, we can calculate the perimeter. So let's start by calculating the perimeter. We'll use the green to help us. So let's take this as our start and we'll go clockwise. So we go around, we go down. So we take our, let's make a little title. I'm always liking titles. 
So we're doing our perimeter calculation. So we start, we travel 15. So we go 15, that takes us to here. We then travel along this side, that takes us to 20, because we get all the way to the end, that's 20. So we go up this side all the way to here, that's another 11. We travel along this side, that's nine, and we can write that down. So that's four sides we've traveled along. Four, we write that here, that's our fifth side. And then lastly, we go along the last side and we're now back to the start and that's just travel 11. So all we have to do now is just add these six sides together. And if you quickly total them up, you will find they become 70 centimeters. Okay. That's the perimeter, the total distance all the way around. Notice that we have six numbers here and we have one, two, three, four, five, six sides. And we've just used the number associated with that side. Okay. Nice and easy. Okay. So just let's rub some of this out because we're not going to need the green there. Okay. So we've calculated the perimeter. Next thing is I said, we want to split this into shapes. Now there's a couple of different ways we could split this, but I'm going to use the blue and red sides as guides to help me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically make two rectangles. Now I could split this shape into three different shapes. I could split it into two different shapes in two different ways. However, you want to go for the simplest solution. You don't want to just be, Oh, let's just split it into as many shapes as possible. That will make it easier. In fact, it will make it more confusing and make it harder for you to figure out what it is you're doing. So let's split it into two shapes. So I'm going to draw a line here, nicely down the side. And what you'll see is that we have a blue rectangle here. Okay. And then if we go around the other shape, we can go this way. we have another rectangle here. Okay, so we have a blue rectangle and a red rectangle. Let's call the blue rectangle A and the red rectangle B. Now I like to do this because it just makes it easier so we can know which rectangle we're working with and it just makes your, your working a little bit simpler. So we're gonna work on area now, aren't we? So let's just move this up a little bit and I'm going to write area. So this is our area section. It's always good to lay out your working so that you're very clear about what you're doing where so you can easily find and spot things. So we've got this rectangle A. All we need to do now is work out the dimensions. So to calculate the area of a rectangle, it's length times width. So remember area of rectangle is equal to length times width, if I can spell it right, length times width. So let's do area of A. So what is the length? Well, or height, length, width, height, the names don't really matter. What's important is that you're multiplying one length that's 90 degrees to the other length. So if we look at this rectangle A, we can see here it's got a height or a length of 11 and a width of nine. Okay. It's not got a width of 20 because this blue line doesn't go all the way across to the other side. It only goes nine centimeters across. So we can write 11 times nine. And if you know your 11 times table, 11 nines are 99. And this leaves us with 99 square centimeters. The units are pronounced square centimeters. They are not pronounced centimeter squared. That is wrong. And you should not do it because it just shows ignorance. It's 99 square centimeters. We come to do B. So area B is the red one. Now this one can be a little bit more confusing. So let's just take a, a little look at it here. So here's area B. So We've got a width. We can see here we've got a width of 11 or a width of 20. Hmm. Is that 20 the, is the red box going all the way across the 20? It's not. So it can't use the 20 because the 20 is going all the way across. Okay. So it must be using the 11. So we're going to use the 11. So that's going to be 11 times something. 
Then we've got a height or a length to find. We've got this four here. Does this four go all the way down the side? It may look like it does, but it doesn't. The four, in fact, is only this side, remember. It's only the length of this little green bit here. So four doesn't take us all the way to the bottom. What takes us all the way to the bottom? This side on the right-hand side here, the 15. So that's 11 times 15, which is 165 square centimeters. Lastly, what we need to do now is do the total area. So total area equals 99 plus 165, which is 264 square centimeters. Okay, so I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, that was a lot easier than I thought. You're also thinking, but couldn't I split this shape up in a different way? Yes, we could. So, let's rub out what we've done here. Let's leave the right working down here at the bottom with our, our shapes and let's change this and see. So, this is a different way it's the same way, but it's just a different way of splitting up. Whoops, let's get the, the blue. And this one here is 11 centimeters. Okay, so this is just a different way of splitting up the shape. And we should be able to get the same answer at the end. If we don't, something has gone terribly wrong and we've made a mistake somewhere. So it shouldn't matter the way you split up the shape. So let's think, we take this blue side here. Let's actually take the whole rectangle all the way across here like this. This one all the way across here, and then this one all the way across there. Okay, so we've got this big blue one. And then let's take the red one, and this time let's make the red one across here, like so. Okay, so this is, as I said, we're splitting up the shape differently. You can rewind the video and have a look back at how it looked before, but this is a different way to split up the shape. We've still split it into two rectangles, but this time we've picked two different rectangles, but they still make that same big shape that we had before. So let's look on the blue one first. Let's just draw a little um, line separator here for our working. So let's call the blue one A and the red one B. So let's look at this one for our blue. So what are we going to do? Length times breadth, length times width. Okay, so what is our width? Our width, we can see this rectangle goes all the way across the shape. It goes from one side all the way to the other. And that's 20 centimeters. So we're gonna write 20 and we're gonna times that by something. Well look, over here we've got the 15. Does that 15, does that blue shy line go all the way to the top like the 15 does? No. It doesn't, it doesn't go all the way. So we can't use the 15. Can we use the 11? Yes, because the 11 is the full part of the side. So that's 11, 20 times 11. So that's actually equal to 220 square centimeters. Let's do B, okay? So we've got the four here, the 11 here. We've got two sides, they're at 90 degrees to each other. The four is the length of this side. The 11 is the width of that side, so we can do 4 times 11, which is 44 square centimeters. And then what we can do here, now we can do our total area, 220 plus 44 is 264 square centimeters. And you'll notice that this area here matches this area here. So it doesn't actually matter which way we split up the shape. What is important is to get the right lengths of the sides. You must make sure that you are looking at the right lengths. We don't want to be using 15 for it, one of the lengths of A, for the length of A, because it's not the correct one. 15, as we saw, goes all the way up and all the way down to here. We only want to go to here, from here. So we have to be careful. We don't, we don't want to go the whole way. We only want this little bit. Similarly here with this nine, nine only goes across here. That's our nine centimeters. It doesn't go the whole way across. Four, four only goes up and down here. So we cannot 
we cannot use four for anything other than that height or that length of that red rectangle. We can't go any further than that. Okay, so I hope this has helped you. That's all for this time. I'll see you again on Hacking Maths.